Lord, I thank you, I thank you for blessing me, blessing me with, the with the gift of life. Lord, I thank you, I thank you for blessing me in this my winning season. Say, Lord, it may look like I'm losing, but you told me that all I do is win, win, win. So, Lord, I thank you. In fact, I praise you in advance because right now is the beginning, the continuation of my winning season. And I'm going to shout and I'm going to praise you. I'm going to rejoice. I'm going to eat the plum food because I believe that I receive all you have for me right now. So in the name of Jesus, so in the name of Jesus, right now, I throw my hands up. Right now, I shout and give God praise. Right now, I give God glory. Right now, I thank God for his hand and his mighty work. I thank God for his faithfulness. Right now, I thank God. And if you believe that, I want you to lift your hands up where you are and just praise God as if he already did what he said because in spiritual reality, he already did what he said. Lift your hands up right now. Father, we just thank you right now. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Somebody wonder, what are you doing? That's my other language. That's when I get excited. Thank you, Father. Lord, we thank you right now for the presence of your spirit. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And the trouble is not so much trouble in and of itself. It's just turbulence going through transition. <laughs> it just little turbulence while you are going through transition. Keep on obeying God. Keep going forward. It just, it just, it's just a little turbulence. Amen. Amen. Hit it up most of us. But if you keep worshiping and praising them, you'll stay on track. Jesus. Lord, we thank you right now for your presence in this place. And we thank you for your glory being revealed in this place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I dare you to get your hands. I dare you to get your, get your mind on Jesus for real. I, 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 I dare you to get your praise him. I, 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 I dare you to worship him like his word is true. I, I dare you to act like it's real. I, I, I dare you to really believe in him. I dare you to take God serious. Believe it for real, for real, for real. And take God serious. Because he is. He's serious. Hallelujah. Oh, you just going through a shift. Yes, sir, I get that. Yes, sir. And maybe a little shift. That's all right, though. That's all right, though. You're still in his hands. He still got you. He's still working in you and through you. He's still blessing you. He's still carrying you. He's still faithful to you. He loves you. And he still has a plan for you. Father, we thank you for your plans being revealed even this hour. And thank you for this time of visitation. Yes, sir, I hear that. Wow. Wow. Thank you for this time of visitation. But also, yes, sir, I hear that. Resuscitation. Yes, sir. Even on marriages right now. You didn't admit, Kodobo. I speak fresh start on marriages. Yes, sir. I, I sense that very strong in my spirit. You didn't know, Kodobo. God is resuscitating you. Yeah, you thought you was out of life. Yeah, no, 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 no. You, God got you. You didn't know, such a Kodobo. Wow. Lord, I thank you for showing yourself mighty and manifesting your glory in this hour. In the name of Jesus. And keep that music playing if you don't mind. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. And if you would, of course, before you take your seat, kind of reach over and just say hi to somebody. Tell them welcome to the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And I want to take this time to welcome face my family. For tuning in today. We pray that something will be said and done for the bless you and encourage you. Yes, there is a word from the Lord. Amen. There is a word from the Lord. Amen. Amen. We want to share that shortly but thank you so much and if you would go ahead and push that share button let your family and friends know that we're on the air right now Remnant Church is live and in living color amen 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 good to see all y'all in the house this morning looks so good up in here 
Amen, amen. I ain't put y'all on the spot, but y'all looking so nice. Amen. Y'all been, y'all been fasting and seeking God. Amen. Amen. Everybody amen. looks saved. Amen. Amen. Saved. Amen. 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 Open your Bibles. I'm gonna be before you. No, I ain't gonna say that. <laughs> that may be a lie. I'm gonna be here long as I have to be. Because I gotta share this word with you. The Lord, the Lord told me to first and foremost to kind of to kind of encourage. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I don't know about y'all, but some of y'all know that, you know, that, that I, 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 the past three, four years, you know, with the different transitioning of many family members, I hate to say many, but it's been many, in different other situations and circumstances and different attacks, amen, that's trying to come against me. You, you know, I, 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 I guess I want to let you know, I want to help somebody this morning. I, you know, you know I, I, I've been through the fire. <laughs> But I came out with some keys. Come on now. Come on, say that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And I want to share some keys while you go in. Anybody, anybody need some keys while they going through the man? Okay. Key number one. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna. We're gonna do. We're gonna do. This ain't. The, this ain't the message. But I gotta do these folk. Is that all right? I feel this right. I feel it impressed upon me because because I, I've been through, and I found the keys. I found key number one. Key number one is maintain your joy. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Understand now. It's just a lot. Of, it's, if you want to, don't turn to it, but you study this out. Nehemiah, yes, sir. Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10. It says, The joy of the Lord is your strength. Because, see, keep in mind, when you lose your joy, you lose strength. Come on. And, and you have to be able, while you're going through the fire, you got to be able to discern when you're losing your joy. Come on. You got to understand. That, that your mind is connected to your emotions. Mm -hmm. And if your emotions are negative in any form or any fashion, mm -hmm. then you go back to what you're thinking. Uh -huh. Okay? I, I, I'm not, I'm not going to teach you on that today. But, but as you think, you're going to emote. Mm -hmm. so, therefore, so, so therefore, when you find your joy getting low, check your thinking. Mm -hmm. Check what you're thinking about. You know, something that I do all the time, you know, Robin used to laugh at me, but I'd be going down the road, and, and, I, and I'd be like, you know, I'd be thinking something negative. I'd slap myself. I'd say, come on, big, come on, big. And she'd laugh, because she knew what I was doing. You know, and apparently my mind was on a bad track. See, the devil's after your mind. Yes, he is. Amen, amen. So, so, so therefore, you, you got to maintain joy. Mm -hmm. Maintain your joy, because watch this. If you don't maintain your joy, you're going to lose strength. If you meditate on negative too long, you're going to lose your momentum. You're going to start fading. You're going to fall to the wayside, okay? Because the truth be told, the devil trying to mess with your head. He can't, he can't really touch you. He's just trying to make you think he can touch you. Then he can get you. He needs permission through your mental uh, capability in order to get there. But you got to stay above him by staying in the Word, okay? Uh, number two, number two, number two. Refuse to quit. Mm -hmm. Refuse to to quit, especially if God told you to do it. See, we refuse to quit. Now, it's okay to rest. Mm -hmm. I recommend it. Amen. It's okay to sit for us. It's okay to take a knee. But no matter what, hear me now, if God has told you to do something, don't quit. Do not quit. The only way you can lose is if you quit. Now, 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 let me say this right quick. And if you've quit before, and you can do this, <clears throat> get back to this. That means you're still alive. Okay. So if you quit something before, and God told you to do it, and you didn't do it, as long as you can do this, get back on the horse. Pick it back up. In fact, that may be the door or the area that the, that the devil is using to attack. Get back in your position. Amen, amen. So refuse to quit. Quit, yeah, yeah. And one of my favorite terms last for the last for the, to, to the pandemic, quit quitting. Amen, amen. I'm not going to preach it right now. Message by itself. Yeah, number three, number three. Number three. Always seek God. Keep an ear to the Lord. Really, truly, truly make him your best 
friend. Mm -hmm. Because he is truly a friend that's sticking closer than a brother. Mm -hmm. that's right. He is truly the only one that will always be there and that will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. Okay? In fact, in fact, in fact, in what you're going through, he's not surprised, he's not caught off guard. In fact, the title of my message today is God has a yes sir, God has a plan to work you through your problem. Mm -hmm. I could come up with a lot of funny stuff, but I just kind the Lord say, He said, tell them, He said, tell them that I got a plan for them in the midst of the problem. Mm -hmm. But God wants to tell you the plan. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah 33 and 3. Now, on seeking God, uh, let me kind of touch uh, you on this a little more. On seeking God, meaning ask God what's up. And then listen for him to answer. Mm -hmm. Say, Lord, what's going on? And then shut up. I mean, I'm sorry, then be quiet. And, and allow God to speak to you and share with you. In fact, you may find some solutions are, are pretty, pretty quick and easy. We, let's go. Uh, we're going to amplify today. Yes, sir. And watch this. This is what God is doing right now. I always be seeking God. Yes, sir. Let me say this too. Uh, how many fasting right now? Well, you ain't got to raise your hand. I know you kind of, some people go, oh, I need that. I can't tell you that. I understand. I don't want to mess up your past. Amen. But, <laughs> but uh, fasting is a way to seek God. Fasting is seeking God, but it's seeking God specifically for answers or solutions or deliverance or blessings or whatever it is, wisdom, whatever it is in certain areas. So, so, and, and of course, as y'all know, we're on a fa I've been fasting since, it's been about 30 days. I've just been going. Now, I, now, you can tell I ain't been fasting no food at all. Amen. You know, <laughs> uh, you know but, but I've been fasting one meal, even different different things like that. And I recommend the same for you. Now, the church fast, of course, is going to begin sometime or another. I'm thinking next week. I, I, I feel a corporate fast coming, but it's so unusual. This year, I sense we always do a corporate fast, but the Lord told me this year that the individual needs to fast first. Amen. Amen. I think he wants your attention first before he gets the corporate attention. Amen. You know, maybe he want yeah, no, no. He wants to talk to you about you first. Amen. Then then talk to you about what you're gonna do here or corporately or church wise. And he wants to get you back online. And talk to you and get you back to where he wants you to be regarding the spiritual sensitivity and what have you. So then he can give you the assignment. Amen. He's trying to get the alignment right before he gives the assignment. But 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 seek him. Jeremiah 33 and 3 says, Call to me, and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things. Has anybody been God been showing great and mighty things to wave at me? Look around, look around, look at that. So he's been talking. Anybody been getting dreams and visions from the Lord? I mean, he's been making some promises. I'm going like, whoa, Lord, this is something. He said, yeah. He said, boy, the best is yet to come. Amen. He said, call to me and I will answer you and show you great Amen. and mighty things. Look, look what he said. Fenced in and hidden, which you do not know, do not distinct, distinguish or and recognize, have knowledge of an understanding. In other words, he wants to show you, yes, sir, I like this word better. Watch this. God wants to reveal to you some revelation about your life. And, and, and the reason why he hid the stuff, because stuff was hidden from the devil. And it's hidden from those that ain't got no business knowing. But there's some things God has given out. Revelation. Yes, sir. He's making your good, bad, and your ugly make sense. He's he going to show you why you went through what you went through, why you're still going through what you're going through, and, and, and why he's going to take you where he's going to take you. Amen. Amen. And all the while, you may still be in the same circumstance, but all of a sudden, just because you know where you're going, now you got peace. Hey, 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 hey. You, you know, it's like, it's like saying we're going to drive to Memphis. And some of y'all know, because Memphis is a big city, got big town buildings. But, 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 but while you're driving down I-40, while you're driving down I-40, going through Brinkley and Long Long and Carlisle, all you see is woods. <laughs> And you think God, you think somebody lied to you. They said, oh, no, we're going to Memphis. I don't see nothing but, but trees and, and, and soybean and cotton. 
and flat ain't no buildings. Don't worry about it. We're going to Memphis. Now watch this. God's word is true. Amen. What he told you he's doing, you just, you're just still on Interstate 40. Right. <laughs> he, he, amen. amen. He, he, he's going to do what he said he's going to do, but he wants to reveal you to you along the way. It's more important for God to show you the real you and who he called you to be than it is for you just to get stuff and things and go on about your way. Okay, okay, look at this. He, he said, call unto me. He said, call unto me, and I will show you great and mighty things. Watch this. Go to Job 23. Now watch this. The title of the message is, yes, the title of the message is, God has plans to solve your problem. Because your problems do not catch God off, off, off guard. This is Job 23 and 10. Yes, sir. In the Amplified. I'm going to read 10. Oh, let me. Mm -hmm. Now watch this. Now, some of y'all, of course, missed on Wednesday night. Just a little, little brief something. On Wednesday night, we talked about Isaiah 48, mm -hmm. 15 through 17. We talked about Isaiah 48 when it talks about that the Lord wants to teach you the prophet. Okay. Okay. Just go to Isaiah 48. Isaiah 48. Uh, on, just just on, on this. Let me show you. Isaiah 48. 15 through 17. Yes, sir. We just start with that. Now watch this. Because, see, when God, when there's turbulence and trouble, God wants to talk to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is God's way sometimes of getting our attention. Sometimes, you know, sometimes He let things happen just to kind of make us to look up. You know, look up now. You know, now you're praying. Come on, That's why He says this here. He said, "Even I have four uh, King James on this one. King James on that one. I like this. He said, "Come ye near unto me." And watch this, because you want to get near to God. He said, "Come ye near unto me." Hear ye this, have I not spoken in secret from the beginning, from the time that it was, there I, I, am I. And now the Lord God and his spirit has sent me. Verse number 16, 17 is fine. Go ahead. Thus said the Lord, we, we stay here. Thus said the Lord, thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord thy God, which teaches thee to... Now, he ain't talking about prophesying, is he? Huh? He said P O O I. That, that means what it mean? That's gonna say money in church. It means money. But also profitable ways. In other words, he's giving instructions that's gonna benefit you. That's gonna work things out for your good. All right. Look what he says. He said, "We're teaching thee to, and which leadeth thee by the way." So that means, in a nutshell, God wants to give you in this season. Instructions, teaching is instruction, and, and directions, that's leading. So the difference is this, yes sir, the difference between instructions and instructions tell you how to do something, right? They tell you how to, you, you, you know, you bake a cake, you know, you need to read the back of the box, because it's going to give you instructions. Now watch this, you can read the back of a, of, of a, of a Duncan Hines box all day. Okay? And get the instructions on how to bake the cake. Well, watch this. That's the teaching part, right? That's the instruction. You don't get your eggs, your milk, you, got your, you, you, you can hold it, you get that part, you got it. But if you don't do the directions, see, the directions is what to do. See, you, you see the difference? Instructions is, is how to do it, but the direction is, is, is where to go. If, if you don't take that, if you don't break open that box, in fact, sometimes, I think nowadays, they've gotten where now on, uh, on different products, they'll tell you to remove uh, contents first. <laughs> I don't know, maybe somebody took the cake. I don't know, somebody took it and threw it in the oven and just started going. I don't know why they did that, but they now they say, remove contents from the container, you know. Uh, but, but, because you got to understand, and what God is doing, he's giving out instructions. See, then watch this. Notice he's giving out, he's giving out instructions before directions. Because he don't want you to just take off going, you know, without instructions. You're going to get there and mess up. 
Mm. He wants to talk to you about where you're going so that when you get there, you know what to do. So, so he, now, now check this out. But this level of instruction doesn't necessarily come from us fivefold ministers. We can talk. We can, I'm going to give you some more scriptures. It's, it's nice. But this is going to come out of your relationship. Can I say this too? In this season, God wants relationship. In, in, in this season, your success is going to be determined by your spirit. By your ability to hear and sense the voice of God and your diligence to obey. So therefore, he said, he, he said, tell them, son, he said, I want to teach them. I want to instruct them. I want to give them some information. I want to teach them to profit. He said, but then I want to show them. Mm -hmm. I want to direct them on where to go. Why? Because remember, now you can write it down for later. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 3 says that God has already given us everything that we need for life. I need to see that too? No, you don't. Y'all good, ain't you? Okay, y'all good. Okay, all right. All right. All right. God is, in other words, God already know where your blessings are. You're not going to fall out the earth. There's already, everything you need is already here. He ain't got to create it. It's already been created. We just need teaching and directions on how to, I like the word somebody said earlier, access. Because it's accessible in the earth realm. We just need directions and God to, and teaching on how to get to it. Now go back to Job uh, 23. Is it making sense to anybody? Because yes, the Lord told me to tell you that he has plans to solve your problem. And thank you so much, media team. I appreciate you, Alicia and Jay, for being flexible with Pastor. You guys are wonderful. I'm saying that so you can continue. Amen. <laughs> Job 23, listen, watch this. It's Job 23 and 10. Watch this. This is why you want to see. He says, but he knows the way that I take. In other words, he has concern for it, appreciates, and pays attention to it. Mm -hmm. Look what it says. When he has tried me, I shall come forth as refined gold. Give me that in the King James. So, so notice this. In other words, see, God knows, God knows the exit, the door, the step, the instruction. He has the answers to your problem. Truth be told, he wouldn't have let you be tested in the problem if you weren't already taught. Yeah, I remember that in school. You, you know, you know, you know, in, in school, the teacher can't give you a test if she ain't taught that lesson. Amen. Now watch this. Whatever lesson you're going through. God already gave you the answers. You just don't remember right now. Actually, you do remember. Actually, actually, ignorance is not the problem. <laughs> it's whether we want to do what he said. But, that, that, but that's, that's other folk. That's not, that's folk. Amen. Look, 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 look at this. Look at this. He said, but he knoweth the way that I take. When he tried me, I should come forth as go. Go to verse 14. Just give you a few scriptures this morning. Because the words speak for us, they have done any good. Amen. Look at this. Look, 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 look. And when you begin to do what God say to you, when you begin to execute the instructions, when he tells you, uh, he said, when he tells you to go, okay, I, I gave a testimony, I gave a testimony uh, last week about how I, I, I became a doctor. Honorary doctorate. And, and, and I gave testimony of how hard it was me trying to do it on my own. I tried to go to school, y'all. But I had a family. I was raising that one and this one. And I, it, it was rough. But she was already kind of grown. But she was still some. And I, I was raising my kids and my wife at that time. Amen. She grown. Look at she's mad now. Uh, and, and, so, and, and, so, and so because I was dealing with them, Chris, I had a hard time trying to do uh, seven, eight years of college to become, a, to get my doctorate in theology. So I told God, I said, Lord, I'm going to have to hold up. He said, no, you go ahead and hold up. He said, you, you, you know, he told me, he said, no, you need to go ahead and take care of them. Take care of the family. 
I got you. I said, okay. So what he did, he changed my direction. He sent me another way. And then he, then he set me up to where he knew I hated flying. He knew, he knew that flying was something that's made me sick. The first time we flew, first time, well, the second time I flew on an airplane, I was sick in the dog. Not the first time I was sick in the dog. And I told myself, I ain't going to never do it again. What the devil do? He was trying to make me dislike the method and the means that God had for me to do what he called me to do. So anyhow, long and, the, the long and short, so what happened, so what happened is that I had to do something, boy, I hear this, I had to do something that I didn't want to do to get something that God wanted me to have. I had to do something that I despised, didn't like, and said out of my mouth, uh-uh. I, I never forget. I never forget when my Elder Warren told me they wanted me to speak at the national convention in Jamaica, and I said, "No." I, I told him, "No, immediately." I didn't think about it because you know, you, I, I thought it all run through the through the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't no bus. <laughs> so I had. I said, "No." I said, I, and we, we, we left my house in the, in the backyard. I said, no, no, no. And he, and he said, I appreciate it. That sounds wonderful. But I'm good. I said, no. Man, I turned, I, I went back in the house. God jumped on me. I went a few times. God like, well, what's wrong with you? I said, what's wrong with you? You ever been jumped on by your parents? They slapped you first, then they talked to you? Okay. And I was like, well, what's up? He didn't hit me, but I'm like, whoa. I, I, I felt just, just real look. I said, what's up? He said, you wrong. And he corrected me and told me that, no, I've called you to that. This is part of my plan for you. Mm. Now watch this. And it's amazing how God does. As soon, and I, and, and I went ahead and I, I, I called him back. I said, hey, man, let me, let me give me a couple of days. Let me, I got my thing I do. I do a three-day fast. If you know me, you're going to hear me say three-day fast all the time. I said, I, I, let me fast and pray, and I'll let you know. Don't, don't just hold up. And of course, God told me in three hours. You know, for three minutes, I knew, I knew to go. Uh, but watch this. But as soon as I said yes to go, immediately the blessings, the favor, the peace, and the joy, and then God began to flood me with other countries and other things that he had for me to do during that time. See, he was withholding, yes, sir. It's like there was a door of blessings and future, but that door was closed until he could get me, just the test part, until he could get me to agree to do something that I didn't want to do. Yeah. But when I said yes, Lord, when I said nevertheless, Amen. <laughs> that will be done. Yes, and when I said nevertheless, I said yes, Lord, then the door opened up and all of a sudden, calls from India, started, and, and so on, and, and I mean, it just went crazy. I, don't, I didn't know who these people were, but God, because we never called nobody to go to no country. They contacted me, and I'm like, what in the world? And it just went crazy, and still is crazy. I go, look, this is crazy, but he had it planned all the time. What has God planned for you that he's, waiting, that he's telling you to do that's something that's unpleasant for you, and that's uncomfortable for you, and that you don't want to do, and that's holding up God's plans for you until you decide you're going to do what God told you to do. Because yeah. sometimes the problem comes because we're not obeying Him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. And here's the beauty of it. And once you say yes to God, and once you obey what God said, look what it says. It says, oh yeah, oh, I'm sorry. And, I, and they gave me an honorary doctorate in India for the work that I've done and so on and so forth. Now watch this. Verse 14. Here's God. For he performeth the thing that is appointed for me and many such things are with him. Notice this. God wants to work out everything, every financial, every medical, every relational, he wants to work out everything that has to do with your life. And, and I like this. And look what it says. It says, and many such things. In other words, there's some other stuff you want to do on the other side of your obedience that he wants to work out as well. Yes, sir. Go with me to Psalms 138. Write these down something you can study later on. You bless me in the Bible? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Psalms 138. 
Yes, sir. We're going to stay in the Amplified. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Psalms 138. Mm -hmm. Get out of here. Now watch this, this is one of my favorites. You, if you've been around me, you know this is one of my favorites. But I'm going to do it in the, I'm going to do this one, yes sir. I'm going to do it in the Amplified first, watch this. Remember the message is God has plans to solve your problems. Psalm 138, I'm going to read verses 7 and 8 in the Amplified, watch this. You ready? It says, Though I walk in the midst of trouble, who is that? It says, you will, it says, you will stretch out your hand against the, and your right hand will, look at verse number eight, here's the attention, watch this. The Lord will, mm -hmm. he will accomplish that which concerns me. Your unwavering loving kindness, O Lord, endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. Once again, whenever I obey God and do what God tells me to do, yes. now whatever I'm going through becomes God's responsibility. Yes. Let me say that again. Whenever, whenever I say yes or I surrender my will to what God is telling me to do, now whatever issue that I'm dealing with, becomes no longer mine. But now it's God's responsibility because I've done what you said, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, let's look at that and amplify. Yes, sir. No, TPT. TPT, same one in the Passion Translation. Yes, sir. I'm going to be shorter than I thought. These scriptures speak for themselves, don't they? Yeah. I mean, I ain't got to really preach it. Y'all y'all already, already know these scriptures. <laughs> Amen. Amen. This smile like you do. Yeah, watch this. <laughs> Psalms 138. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Psalms 138. TPT. It says, verse 7. He says, By your mighty power, I can walk through any devastation. Oh, wow. <sighs> you can meditate. That, 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 you just alive. Sit. Let that sit and chew and meditate for an hour or two on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By your mighty power, I can walk through any devastation. Look at this. Not only that, but look. And you will keep me alive. Reviving me. Who Jesus. Somebody say revive me, Lord. Revive me. And God will revive you when you say yeah. You'll get an inner strength. You'll get an inner energy. you you, you have a drive. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to tell you something. I know there have been many times I should be crying. I should be depressed, folks be calm, and you all right? I'm like, yeah, man, I really am. Um, you know, I'm like, look, this is amazing. But I've learned to surrender to the will of God, and thus automatically receive the grace of God to go through the circumstance. Amen. I love this. He said, by your mighty power, I can walk through any devastation. And you will keep me alive, reviving me. Look what it says. Your power set me free from the hatred of my... I ain't going to have enemies to this year. Hey Amen. Don't worry about that. Come out. I'm sorry. I just got the mic. Everybody love me. We better go to verse, huh? We'll go to, go to the next verse. We'll go right up here in church. Watch this. Look, look. What y'all like that? Oh, no, keep it. Just stay on there. Come on, Pastor. You keep every promise. You ever made to me. Hold on. Has God kept every promise he made to you? Yes. 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 Now who in here God has kept every, every promise to way back? Really look at the raise your hand up high. Look around. He really has. He's God. So he ain't never lied. Never. So you're gonna start lying in 2023. So God's gonna start lying in January. Jesus. <laughs> So you keep every promise. What you doing over here? You got that. You're really loose. You keep every promise you ever made to me. Look, since your love for me is constant and endless, he said, I ask you, Lord, to finish every good thing that you've begun in me. Ooh, Hold up. Think back. Think for a second. 
What are the things that God told you to do? Think about that job he told you to get on, that marriage, that relationship, that ministry. What has God told you to do? Look what it says. It says, I ask you, Lord, to finish every good thing that he begun in me. Lift your hands and say, Lord, Lord I thank you, I thank you for, finishing for finishing every, every good, thing good thing that you have begun, you have begun in, me. in me. Yes, sir. But there's another house, baby girl. There's another house. Amen. Now, now some things that God has begun, but he ain't through. Amen. Amen. There's some more. Amen. Because he's all, he always got door and he got levels and door after door after door. My last scripture, Psalms. Yes, sir. 16. Just bless anybody today. Yes, Psalm 16. I'm going to start with this one. Because I really want you to understand that. God has plans to solve your problem. But his plans to solve your problem require your attention. He wants you to stick with him. Stick with him. Yes, sir. And just because you get an answered, don't stop. Stay there. Yeah. Amen. He, 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 yeah, he, he wants relationship. Yeah. Amen. 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 He wants relationship. He wants continual relationship. Psalm 16. Yes, sir. Psalm 16, and I'm going to do verses 7 through 11 in the, I'm going to do the Amplified first. Psalm 16. Once again, we're just using the word. Just letting the word speak for itself. And I hope you highlight these. Because if you got a Bible that's so good and so holy you can't write in, get you a holy, but, but get, you, get you another Bible that you nope. can't. <laughs> No, no, this is why I say that because something's going to happen tomorrow. I ain't, trying, I ain't prophesying. But things happen, and you got to be able to grab your Bible and get to that word. Amen. See, you know, and, and every single day, I grab my Bible, and I say, Lord, what's up today? And I grab my Bible, and I open it up. And guess what? I, it, it, my eyes always go to a highlighted part first. I always go to the spot, and I go, ooh, and guess what? Nine times out of ten, it'd be right on time. He gave me one this morning. I said, ooh, Lord, thank you. I'm glad I had that. I'm glad I had it underlined. Come on. And this morning he gave me a powerful. I said, ooh, Lord, this is good. I sat there and stared at it. I said, ooh, I got to go to church. I ain't preaching that. That's for me. Yeah, that's a personal word. God wants a personal relationship with you. And these are words that you don't necessarily share with your spouse. This stuff that God talking to you about you. Amen. Psalm 16. Yes, sir. Seven. Watch this. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. So God wants to talk with you, right? He said, Yes, my heart instructs me in the night season. Why God talk at night? Huh? Hey, hey, what is this about three o'clock in the morning? <laughs> anybody get three? Did, anybody got three o'clock moments with God? Eh? Who I got? Who I got to stand at three o'clock for with God on the I seen you in the hall. I saw you in the waiting room, man. He does that because the sad reality—that's when the few times he can get our attention. Because what we do during the daytime when we're going through stuff, we tend to use escapisms. I'm, I'm sorry. We, we we tend to pacify our pain you know, through different methods. Be it alcohol, weed, or, or just music, or whatever, TV. Or, we, we tend to escape what we're going through mm -hmm. by anesthetizing our minds and our soul by, by indulging or listening to something that really just not is frivolous, but it takes our mind of, of what we're going through. The downside of that, it ain't feeding the spirit. So therefore, it may be alleviating your mind. It may, giving you, it may be giving you a breather on the issue, but at the same time, it's not feeding your spirit or strengthening you regarding what you're going through. You're not getting information. So you want to flip that and start getting more word. Amen. Yes, sir. You want to increase your word level this year. You, you got to eat more word this year. You, you, you're going to have to make reading the Bible more. I know that, that Christian music is good. But turn that off for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, ooh, that type. Turn it off for a while. <laughs> 
and turn some scripture on. Oh, no, no, it don't, it don't need a whole lot. It could be just this one. You know, it could be just the one that's relevant, needed, and necessary for the moment. But you're going to have to. See, at, at some point, yes, sir, if you're going on music, then you are still on milk. And if praise and worship is, and that's it's good. I'm glad you're doing it now. Done. Keep doing that. Milk is, milk is better than nothing. You know, but, but let's put some cereal in there. <laughs> <laughs> let's, 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 let's put some word in that a little bit. You know, and, and kind of start getting strong, actually. You know, strong enough to where, watch this, strong enough to where we can actually do ministry and help people and not come to church all the time looking for solutions for ourselves. You know, because a healthy church is a church that comes to help people. But most churches folk come to get help. But that's all right. We, we, we're growing. And uh, I don't know if I lost today. That's good. Yeah, yeah. So, so in this season, you're going to have to get some meat, man. Hey, 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 hey. Them dry brothers on TV that you don't like? Of the other, other, of the other skin? Andrew Walton. Hey, you got to listen to him. You got some word. Amen. Mm -hmm. Hey, Brother Copeland, I understand. But, 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 but God told you to sit down and listen to him. He may have your answer. Amen. Mm. No, don't raise your hand. I, don't raise your hand on that. <laughs> yes, sir. I hear that. Lord told me to tell you, it's what you don't like, it's what you need. It's what you think. It's what you don't like. It's what you need. Praise the Lord. Let me get back up here. I will bless the Lord. <laughs> who has given me counsel. Yes, my heart has stretched me in the night season. And that way you don't have to have that 3 o'clock appointment. You can see through the night. Come on. See. You know, you, you don't have to sing, can't sleep that night. Yeah. Maybe God, you know, no, God, I, God told you where you went to be. See through. You know what I'm saying? All right, all right. Let me keep going. I'm having too much fun. I have said the Lord continually before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be Move. Verse number seven, number nine, eight. No, I'm sorry. Therefore, watch this. And when you start spending time fellowshipping with God, now this, 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 the thing is hard to understand. But when you start making God your go-to mm -hmm. while you're going through, it gives you a grace and a strength and a peace and a joy that really truly surpasses your natural understanding. Mm -hmm. You'll be giggling and grinning, and you'll be questioning your own sanity. I'm telling you, I'm a living witness. But what God be doing, he be incubating you, covering you, and gracing you, and keeping you while you're going through something until you get to the other side. Yes, sir. So therefore, what happens, so, so the results of, of seeking God would be this. Number nine, therefore my heart is glad, and my glory, my inner self rejoices. My body too shall rest and Confidently, all of a sudden you ain't have no mind battles no more. They can threaten you and you ain't tripping no more. Hey, hey, hey you find yourself saying, Go on in. All right. Amen. He said, My body too shall rest and can confidently dwell in safety. Verse number 19. For you will not abandon me in Sheol, the place of the dead. Neither will you suffer your holy one to see corruption. Verse number 11. Yes, sir. You will show me the path of life. See, there's a path for your life. And the problem that you are now encountering is along the path. God knew that it was along the path. But he was hoping that the problem along the path would cause you to draw closer to him. He says, you will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Give me some music. I'm going to close. Do this one more time. Same passage in the TPT. Now watch this. In the, in the, in the uh, Passion Translation. Yes, sir. Psalm 16. Yes, sir. And verse number. Watch this. Watch this. Look what God wants to do. It says, For you bring me a continual revelation of resurrection life. The path to bliss that brings me face to face with you. Mm -hmm. But he says, verse 12, he says, mm -hmm. 
verse 12. Seven. You read it? It says, the way you count is Psalm 16, verse 7 through 11. Watch this, TPT. It says, the way you counsel me makes me praise you more. Yes, sir. By the way, when God counsels you, he ain't going to dog you out. He's going to say, you number head, you messed up again. Now that's you. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If, if, if it's a put down and a criticism, this is your own voice condemning you. And you got to discern that going forward. Because if not, you're going to talk yourself out of stuff. You with that lady? He said, the way you counsel me makes me praise you more. For your whispers in the night give me wisdom. Showing me Psalm 16 and 7. He says, showing me. Yeah, go verse 7. There we go. The way you counsel me makes me praise you more. For your whispers in the night give me wisdom. Showing me what to do next. Because I set you, Yahweh. Always close to me, my confidence will never be weakened. For I experience your, I love this word, boy, that's a message there. I, I experience your wrap around presence every moment. Ooh, we, that's the presence of God that's holding you. Oh, somebody just said, that's wrap around presence. Mm, 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 that's the time. He says, he says, verse number nine. My heart and soul explode with joy, full of glory. Even my body will rest confident and secure. Verse 10, for you will not abandon me to the realm of death, nor will you allow your faithful one to experience corruption. Verse number 11, and here I close it, yeah, one more, I close it this. Because of you, I know the path of life. As I taste the fullness of joy in your presence. At your right side, I experience divine pleasures forevermore. Amen. Lift your hands to the Lord. Say, Father, Father I, thank you I thank you that you have a plan, have a plan along, my path along my path to deal with my problems. With my problems. And Father, and Father, in the name of Jesus. I ask, you I ask you to reveal to me, to reveal to me the, solution, the solution, the path, the, path, the, turn. the turn. Yes, sir, I hear that. Yes, keep your hands up. And for some of you, he's saying, wait. Ah, yes, sir. Just wait. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. For some, he's saying, just don't go any further until I tell you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Say, Lord. Lord. I thank you, I thank you for, training my for training my spirit while I'm dealing with this trouble. With this trouble. I thank you, I thank you that, you that you are using even this problem, even this problem to, prepare me, to prepare me, to grow me, to, grow me, to, mature, me, to mature me in the things of you. Things of you. And I thank you, I thank you for how you're maturing me you're so that you can manifest you within me not just, riches, not just riches, not just stuff, not just stuff. but that you can manifest you can your presence, your, presence. Your, joy, your joy, your love, your, love. your, peace. your peace. And right now, and right now in, Jesus name, in Jesus' name, I receive, I receive your, peace, your peace, even in the midst, even in the midst of the problem, the problem. Because, I because I know I'm on a path, on a path. and that you are taking care taking of care. everything that concerns me. Lord, I thank you that as I obey you, my problems are no longer my problems. But now they're yours. So I'm going to relax. I'm going to have joy. I choose peace. I rejoice because I know that you always have been faithful and that you're faithful today too. In Jesus' name. Give him a shot of praise in this place. Oh, yeah. You got a shot of praise like you believe in it. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, it's offering time. Amen. In fact, our fourth point, our fourth point of this 
particular the four points that I gave was of course uh, the key is to maintain your joy refuse to quit always see God but your fourth point is this keep tithing keep giving you gotta keep giving in order to get a harvest keep sowing seed in order to receive you don't have to turn to it, but 2 Corinthians 9 and 6, in fact, it's on the offering ropes. It says you sow bountifully and you will reap bountifully. So if you're here today...